Welcome to Still Worth Playing, the show where I tell you if a title is worth picking up a bit late to the game. Literally. On this episode, we have the Halo series. Halo is a Space Marine first person shooter. Possibly the Space Marine first person shooter. I mean, at least that's my opinion. To be honest, this video is going to be a little biased because the Halo series is like one of my favorites and it's influenced my entire gaming life in many, many ways. Countless hours of fun for me and my friends over the course of so many years. It's ridiculous. I mean, I can't even explain how much I played Halo 3. Like literally, if I was somehow able to find out how many hours I played that game for, I'm sure the number would be so big that my girlfriend would leave me right away. Like immediately. Like right now. But! Halo did not start at Halo 3, obviously, because it's the, it's the third one, that's why there's a, there's a 3 after it. Halo Combat Evolved came out for the original Xbox in 2001. It was absolutely their killer app. People were obsessed, and it was pretty much an instant success. I mean, some would say that it has to do with the millions and millions and millions of dollars Microsoft poured into it for marketing and advertising and everything else, but it was also pretty good. From then on, the series kept hitting it out of the park. In 2004, Halo 2 was released, and with the help of the new online service, Xbox Live, that game again took the gaming world by storm, baby. Now it wasn't just about Master Chief and his little story with aliens or whatever. Now it was about signing on and destroying other players online with your favorite weapons. Now, with extreme dual-wielding action. Halo was unstoppable, giving birth to sites like Machinima and even shows like Red vs. Blue, which is like, it's a TV show. Someone filmed them and their friends playing Halo 2 and set up scenes and made a show about it. This is real. It's just amazing the impact this series was having. But then, Halo 3 came out, and in my opinion, it is basically perfection. Beautiful maps, beautiful design, the amount of things you can do in Forge and custom games. The map packs were all fantastic. I mean, I couldn't find a flaw if you asked me. I played every online multiplayer mode that they made. I mean, I downloaded as many custom maps that I could find, and every weekend, Griffball was all that I did. Whole weekend. Me, my friend, Griffball. That's it. It is still one of my most fondly remembered times playing video games. And I wouldn't change those sleepless nights for the world. Then Halo Reach was announced. And I gotta admit, I was kinda concerned when I first saw it. I mean, jetpacks, sprinting, I, I don't know how I feel about that, being in a Halo game. But then I played it. Oh my god, did I play it. And how did they do it? How did they take Halo 3, something that I thought was perfect, and make it even better? Little tweaks, changes, additions, everything the game needed to be, to be absolute perfection. And it was. And it is. If you're a Halo fan, Halo Reach is the game. I know some people disagree because they can't see how poorly designed Halo 2 is compared to today's standards. What? But in my opinion, it does not get any better than Halo Reach. After playing this game, I just can't explain how much I loved Halo. So it may come as a surprise to you when I say that I, uh, think Halo campaigns are complete garbage. B b b bad campaigns? They're the best campaigns ever made. The story behind the Arbiters and the Spartans and Cortana and Master Chief and the expanded universe with the books and stuff make it like the best thing ever, bro. You don't even know it, bro. It's so smart and brilliant and like you shoot stuff and you can like find Easter eggs in the game and like it's good and I love the campaigns and like how dare you say that? I mean, Muso Games were like Muso Gay. <laughs> am, I, am I right? Am I right, guys? Yep, good one, man. You got me. Cool, cool. Yeah, Halo campaigns, they aren't my thing. I've played and beaten all of them, and they're just, they're just boring. I don't know what to tell you. They're just freaking boring. Up and over, Chief. Except for the last level of Halo 3. That's not so bad, but seriously, I couldn't care less if the game had a campaign. That's honestly how much I enjoy the multiplayer in Halo games. And especially how much I enjoy the perfection that is the multiplayer in Halo Reach. So if a game franchise is already perfect, how can you get better? The answer? You don't. What you do, apparently, is hire a brand new team to make the fifth game in the series, call it Halo 4, and then take all the things that make Halo Halo, and get rid of them almost entirely. Ah, <sighs> Halo 4. Oh god. Now let me start by saying I like Halo 4. I mean, I do. It's not terrible, but they took everything that made Halo more than just a first-person shooter and got rid of it. Gone were great Forge options to make interesting custom maps. Gone was the fun theater mode to watch, edit, and record your previous games. I mean, gone were unique multiplayer modes that went above and beyond in creativity. Gone was Griffball. 
gone was the charm. Why? Don't get me wrong, some of the stuff I just mentioned was technically still in the game, but it lost all the flavor and all of the enjoyment. It lost Forge World, the best thing to ever exist, ever, on this planet, Earth. Water? Fuck you. Forge World. It lost Griff Ball and Double XP Weekend. Maybe not technically, but like the community that surrounded it and the feeling of when it happened. And it's not just me. I mean, the entire community like just did not care about it anymore. It stopped because the enjoyment of it was gone. It just had the life sucked out of it. Maybe it was because it was a new company that made it all feel a little off, but it was just odd. I mean, SWAT wasn't even fun anymore. SWAT is my favorite game mode. I guess I'll just have to go back to playing Halo Reach. And I did. And then Master Chief Collection came out, and I'm, I'm not, not even going to talk about that. It's, it's fine. It's whatever. But then, Halo 5. Cool! Halo 5. Maybe they learned from their mistakes in Halo 4. It wasn't, wasn't terrible, but definitely was not perfect. Not even close to the level that Halo Reach was. So maybe it's going to be different this time around and better. <coughs> what the fuck is this? 343? Get over here. No, 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 no. Get over here. What the fuck is this? You told me you were gonna improve on the list game. And what you did is you came here and you gave me shit. It's just what don't, don't you cry. I put good money for this game. I put good, no, don't embarrass me here. Do not embarrass me here. Do not embarrass me here right now. But what is this seriously? This is just Halo 4 again. Halo shouldn't have gun loadouts. Halo shouldn't have sprint all the time. The limitations of the previous games in the franchise are what made it special. It was different. It didn't feel like Call of Duty because it didn't need to. It wasn't that game. It was unique. There wasn't any other game like it, especially with how self-aware it was with its over-the-top silliness. It knew it was an unrealistic space game with aliens, bazookas, and sticky bombs. It laughed at itself and embraced the culture of people who had spent hours on this first-person shooter making a racing map, or a platforming map in a game that doesn't have very good jumping, or a custom game that made it so some people could fly across the map while others were slow as hell. It knew why it was fun, and instead of ignoring what the community was doing, Halo embraced it and gave back tools that made it easier to customize and alter a game beloved by so many. So what happened? Did Halo forget what was so special about itself? Is Bungie the only company that understood what made a good Halo game? Uh, possibly. My final thoughts are hard on this one because I, I'm honestly split. Is Halo the franchise it once was? At this point, no, not at all. I mean, I think sales and interest kind of show that. Is it still fun? In some ways, yes, but it doesn't come close to previous entries. Has it lost its way? Maybe. But most importantly, is it still worth playing? To be honest, I don't know. Four and five, no. I'd say don't give them your time. I mean, they're pretty cheap right now, but it doesn't seem worth it to me. However, even cheaper is Halo 3 and Halo Reach, and they are just as much fun as they have ever been. And they're backwards compatible with Xbox One. So you know what? Go pick up a copy of Halo Reach. Go pick up a copy of Halo 3. Go online, download some custom maps, make some of your own, and play the games that brought Halo to its peak. Ignore the ones after, and you'll have a fantastic time. Just because it's older, doesn't mean it can't still be played. If you're one of those people that has to play the newest in a series just because it's new, then I feel sorry for you. While you play Halo 5 and try to figure out why people like Halo games in the first place, I'll be playing the Halo games that answer that question. Because these games are absolutely still worth playing. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.